Hi travelers, um, this is kind of an unexpected reading, but my guides have been um, after me to kind of change up the way that I do my work and um, to offer more consultations geared towards um, the spiritual work. Now, there are many people on YouTube who offer spiritual work. They set lights or they cast spells or whatever the case may be. Um, <clears throat> I will offer two services. One will be a candle setting, a, a setting of lights. Uh, and that is strictly for um, prayers and petitions. In other words, if it's something that uh, you may be worried about or something that you're kind of going through or something in which you may need a bit more strength and guidance, um, I can set lights for you. And, and that is to dress and burn the candle and restate your prayer and or petition for you. And then um, I can read, um, taking notes of how the candle burns, what type of flame, if there's any soot, if it was a clean burn, if it was a bad burn, um, you'll get what's known as a candle report. Now, the other, and I'm only going to offer two services, the other service is the conjure consultation. Now, that is pricier, way pricier than just candle, uh, than just setting lights for you. But the reason why that's a pricier reading is because a lot of readers will do the work for you. Um, they intercede on your behalf. However, those of you who have been with me for however long you've been with me know that I am big on doing your own work, okay? Um, in other words, I'm not going to take on the spiritual responsibility of you doing your own, of, of doing the cleaning and the cleansing and the clearing, the protections, whatever it is that you need. Um, that is not my spiritual work. That is your spiritual work. Therefore, you will be responsible for that. What the reading does and what I do is we will look at that particular situation and then based upon what uh, we find uh, during the consultation, I will uh, do the research for you and give you the prescription of everything that you're going to need to do in order to kind of um, clear that ground for you. I did a, a, a conjure consultation when I first offered it. Well, not when I first offered it. I did one last month for a lady who contacted me and she says, look, you know, my boyfriend and I just moved into a, a, a we just purchased a new home. And ever since we've moved into the home, we've been fighting like cats and dogs. And I just don't know where this situation is going to go. And so my question to her was, well, before you moved in, did you do any spiritual cleansing of, of the property? And she said, no. And I said, well, uh, how do you know that the people who inhabited that space before you did not fight like cats and dogs? So what is happening is that that residual energy is affecting you and your partner now in this in this new home. So I prescribed for her uh, first a, a set of cleansings for herself and then cleansings of the property. And then I prescribed for her a way to keep those things up. So two weeks go by uh, and she contacted me. She says, oh my God, we've actually stopped fighting. We have even gone into counseling. She said, and I am at so much more peace. So this is why I say that a lot of times you will purchase, uh, you will do consultations with readers. And I'm, I'm not talking bad about anybody who does this kind of work and does it the way that I'm not going to do it, okay? But the reason why sometimes maybe that work it does it's not successful is because you yourself are not taking the responsibility of doing the work yourself okay my role as a reader and as a worker as i've always said is to give you the information okay it is not my spiritual responsibility to do the work for you it does me no good to do the work it does you no good to do the work for you why because i don't need that kind of work <laughs> okay so therefore this is you and i uh, coming together and working hand in hand. Me passing on the knowledge and the skills that both my ancestors and my guides give me, uh, my knowledge of uh, roots and herbs and plants, of spiritual protections, 
things that you can do that I'm going to pass on to you. And then you yourself will be required to gather the tools and the utensils and then work that work for yourself. This is how the work is more successful because who knows uh, more than you what you need. When did you need it? Did you need it yesterday? Do you need it tomorrow? Do you need it now? Okay. So although I can um, send you prayers and good wishes, um, that absolutely means nothing if you are not on the physical plane, the third dimension, doing that work yourself. You see, it doesn't typically work when you are not aligning the seventh, the fifth, the seventh dimensions to the third dimensions. In other words, what you put into it is what you get out of it. And so if you're paying somebody just to do the work for you, but nothing is changing, that's because you yourself ain't, ain't, ain't um, actively showing the universe that you're willing to do the work yourself. You're hoping that somebody else can come along and change a condition for you, right? Well, you know, how do you expect to get paid if you go to work and don't work, right? And when you actively go into uh, doing the work yourself, then the universe will match that intention. It will see that you are serious about doing the work and it will step in to help you with whatever it is that you're struggling with. All right. So those are the two things that I offer. Now, what I'm going to do, I think, is create another reading called the Get Acquainted Reading. And the reason why I'm going to do the Get Acquainted Reading is because there are many of you who watch my channel. Y'all lurk in the background. Y'all may not be subscribers, but y'all lurk in the background. And you either are fearful of me. Um, I've read lots of people who say, you don't like my energy, and that's fine. Okay. Um, and you do want to be careful about who you allow to muck about in your energy. Really, you do. Um, so I can offer you the get acquainted reading. I may not end up being the reader or the worker for you. Granted, and I understand it. Others of you say, well, I don't like to refer people to you because you seem so harsh. Part of that is um, the authority in which comes out of my voice. Um, but just because you hear authority in my voice don't mean I know every damn thing. Because I don't. I'm the first person to admit I don't know. If I don't know, I don't know. And I'm going to tell you, I don't know. Okay? Um, but if you're looking for somebody to sugarcoat shit for you, I'm not the one. Okay, I'm going to give it to you plain. I'm going to give it to you straight. I'm not going to bullshit you with your time, your money, any of that, your hopes. I'm not going to string you along uh, in a continual flow of purchasing products from me and then nothing changes. Okay, that's really a waste of my time. And I find that personally myself to be very unethical. And I do believe in karma. Some workers don't believe in karma. I believe in karma. Okay, and so when I do, if I do work with, with the intention of just stringing people along to get my, that's going to come back on me eventually in some way, shape, or form. And so I'm always very, very cognizant of how I interact with my clients. And the way I interact with my clients is the way I want to be interacted with. Okay, I want to be treated fairly. I don't want people to bullshit me. I don't want people to scam me or steal from me or tell me shit that's not going to benefit me in, in any way. And I'm a Virgo, so y'all know that, you know, if, if the information ain't useful, we're not do it, dealing with it. We're going to kick that shit to the side and find something else to do with it. Um, so that is how I work. Now, the Get Acquainted reading will be um, a three-card reading, and so I'm going to demonstrate that for you today. And then based upon that three-card reading, we will determine whether or not you simply just need, if you'd like, to have a light set for you and your prayer to help you through this particular time, to grant you perhaps some clarity, some wisdom, some peace of mind, some rest, I don't know, whatever it is that you feel you need. Or it may determine that during the Get Acquainted reading that you might need more work, in which case I'm going to set it up to where the price of the Get Acquainted reading will be applied to the Conjure Consultation. I think that's fair. Now, I've had lots of people contact me and say, well, your readings are expensive. Well, look, I'm going to tell you like I tell clients when I deal with them on a personal level. My readings are always free. What you pay me for is my time. Okay? My readings are always free. But my time is not. That is my most valuable asset and resource. Okay? And so uh, I have one client who will contact me every time she wants a reading to ask me if I can do a reading. You got the money? I got the damn time. You ain't got the money? I can't help you. <laughs> okay? That may sound um, very um, 
materialistic, but it's not. Um, because what happens if, if, if uh, I do work without some kind of payment, um, that means I'm expending my energy without something coming back. Now, that's not to say I don't do free readings. I do. My clients know that I do. I pick people out sometimes. You know, they may post something up on, on in the website under a thing, and I'll contact them, and I'll say, hey, look, you know, I don't announce that. I do pro bono readings for people, but I do it based upon what I feel coming from the, the client, okay? And so... Um, you know, if you, if you need a reading, you want a reading, then pay for it, you know, but, but wasting my time by contacting me and asking me if I have time for it is a waste of time because now I got to waste time answering you back. If you need the reading, you feel you want the reading, you need to know something, uh, you want to know something, then pay me for the reading. Trust me, you will get it within 24 to 72 hours. That's how I work. I don't make people wait. Okay. So with that being said, uh, give me until perhaps tomorrow morning and I'm going to put together the um, Get Acquainted reading, how it works, okay? And if that's something you'd like, you can go in and purchase that, all right? Um, for those of you who say my readings cost too much, okay, then find somebody else. I don't know what to tell you, okay? And I'm not upset about it. Here, and I, I, I pull these three cards to lay them out. And then what I'm going to do is give you a sample reading, and then we're going to do another one live. We're just going to pull the cards. And what I'm looking at um, is the idea someone has either tried to move, okay, they're trying to leave a particular situation, or they're trying to move into a new direction. There is this Six of Swords. In fact, I kind of think that the person doesn't even know uh, exactly where they want to go. They simply know that they need to move, whether this is um, literal or whether this is um, uh, figuratively. In other words, um, you may be okay where you are in the physical location, but your mind's telling you it's time for you to do something different. Okay? So that's what I mean, either literally or figuratively. Now, while this is happening, or while this is occurring, or while you are contemplating this, something occurs completely unexpected, okay? Something completely out of the blue. For some of you, this is the idea of um, perhaps on a mental plane, if you know you need to mentally move or spiritually move uh, in a new direction, this has come about for you in, in the sense that your values are changing. We have Uranus and Taurus right now. There's our tower card. Okay. So this could be that sudden insight of, of all of a sudden recognizing, you know what? I need to be doing something different or I need to move in a different direction. What I have been doing and where I've been investing my time and money, my focus, my energy, my dedication no longer is serving me. And we see that you're kind of moving along perhaps at a slow rate. And then suddenly you get this inspiration. Because sometimes the tower can be about that epiphany, that aha moment. Now I know what I'm supposed to be doing. But what is happening on the other side of this is, I think for some of you, there may be a fear in actually doing that. It's a coins card. Uh, for others of you, it could be literally the idea that you don't have enough finances to do that. Or perhaps you are saving up whatever you're saving up. This could be your determination, your focus. Maybe you're sitting down and you're putting together a plan. You're trying to put things together so you're not investing any of your time and energy and money um, uh, into a project. What you're doing is you're conserving those things so that when the time comes, you'll be able to make that move. For others of you, it could be simply the idea that some unexpected expense came. Maybe your car broke down or maybe um, there was an unexpected bill that came about or maybe the move actually, uh, maybe you had budgeted for one amount of money and suddenly you find out that the, the, the terms and the conditions and the price has changed. Now you've got to sit down and you've got to wait to save up more money, okay? 
um, personally, in a situation like this, um, this would require a setting of lights because this is only a moment, okay? It's not something that severe. Um, and so while you are waiting, what you may need is a, a bit more clarity on the situation or a bit, bit more um, patience on the situation or um, a bit more um, groundedness in what it is you're trying to do. So we would set a light. I would burn a candle for you in accordance to whatever it is you need. If you need more clarity and, and peace, that would be a blue candle. Um, if you really just want things to stay where they are, you need a bit, a bit of protection right now uh, while you go through this. This could be a white candle. And I find that using white candles um, really work best. I don't always use a lot of colored candles because a white candle will accept anything that you give it, okay? And therefore, you can dress it with oils and herbs and pray your petition uh, into it and it will accept whatever it is that, that it is you're trying or that you say that you need. Now, um, if this is a green candle, if it's a money issue for you, maybe you have um, you have a bit of worry and a bit of fear about how you're going to manifest this situation. So then we could burn a green candle. So that's how you set the lights. OK, now, if this were something uh, much more significant, that may require that conjure consultation reading. OK, so if you are fighting uh, in your home in your home one second someone's knocking at my door one second sorry about that that's my neighbor asking me when can i uh do a cleansing for him well anyway um so um if this were a much more serious situation then that will require the conjure consultation and again with the get acquainted reading we would take that 25 dollars and apply it discount it off to to that reading so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull um, another card. So if you recognize that situation, um, you know, I can set a light for you, um, dressing it with, with uh, special oils and herbs and actually restating your prayer and your petition for you. So I'll have that set up where with the form where you can um, write out your petition and your prayer. Uh, please read that information carefully for the things that I'm going to need from you. And then you can make that payment. Um, we're going to set that price at $10. Okay. It's just a moment. So now I'm going to pull three more cards. Two of Wands, the Six of Pentacles, aha, and the Empress. Well, <clears throat> now, our focus is, is, is um, a moment in time with the Six of Pentacles. Where either we are dealing with someone who can help, is willing to help, uh, is in a position to help, whether this is through uh, financial gifts and charities or, or uh, loans, things of that nature, um, or if they can help you uh, simply by maybe you need to, um, you need some work done and um somebody comes over and offers to help you. Maybe you need to put up some shelves, okay? Uh, again, this goes back to that idea of energy exchange, one thing for another. So let's say you don't have the money for somebody to come over and, and, and build your shelves or whatever. Maybe there is something, some talent that you do have uh, that you can barter with that person, okay? We've got these wands and this empress energy um, and this six of pentacles. Now, that's one interpretation. Now, the other interpretation is that we may be dealing with someone who is um, expending more energy doing one thing or towards one person and not the other. 
okay? I have seen that card show up sometimes like the player card. Um, obviously, there are two choices and two decisions here. There's that two of wands. And then we see this person standing between two individuals. Now, um, he's holding the scales, in other words, of balance, not of justice, but of balance. So the question becomes, if you're in a situation where, let's say, um, let's say you're the side chick and dude got to always, you know, you always get the kind of leftovers and the dregs, okay? Uh, is that equal? Is it fair? And is it balanced? Um, are you settling for um, whatever, whenever? Okay. You see the one person's begging for attention and begging for funds and begging for money. And the man is squarely focused on someone else. Maybe this is about, um, um, this could be at work a work situation where um, someone has just been given a raise and you didn't get one, but you know that you better and you know more than what they do. Okay. So this situation can play out in more ways than one. What is most apparent and most important about this is the idea of here is Venus. This is our Empress card. Now, she also rules, for those of you who uh, are website members with the astrology, she also represents Ceres, the goddess Ceres. She's the goddess of agriculture. Um, and if you know the myth of Ceres, and if you don't know it, website members, please go to the bar and type in Ceres, and that will pull the article up for you. Um, and you can learn all about her. But Ceres basically speaks about division of space, uh, division of property. Uh, sh it's about sharing and carving up things. This could be in relation to a child support issue or a custody issue. I've sometimes seen this when it deals with food issues. Maybe someone you, you, you may have been struggling with issues of bulimia and or anorexia, anorexia or there's someone in your family that you're dealing with who might have those issues. Why? Because she's the goddess of agriculture. Um, but nevertheless... If we look at her simply as Venus, Venus represents our personal monies. So this is money that you yourself have, not that you have in relationship to someone else, okay? So this rules your bank accounts, your 401ks, your insurance, your mortgages, your car payments, your loans, everything that you earn, owe, or borrow. It speaks to your business. If you have, if you run a business, even if it's a side business, if you got a side hustle, it speaks to charities. Okay. How do you invest and donate your time and your resources to other people? All right. But it also rules your values and your value systems. Okay. There are some people and situations that are more precious than goals. What are you willing to sell your soul for? What are you not willing to sell your soul for? Is what you're putting into it in uh, effort, uh, thought, e emotion, uh, finances, whatever it is that you're doing, because she's an earth card, okay, is what you're investing in bringing back the kind of returns that you want or need, okay? Now, this tells me that for some of you, this is a... a, a an idea based upon finances in terms of the work that you're doing uh, but really at its core level what it's speaking to me about is uh, this idea of how can I um, perhaps get someone to come along because Venus also represents cooperation in order for us to be able to um, gain the assistance of everybody there has to be harmony between us there has to be a balance. There has to be an equal exchange, something for something, right? It has to be a symbiotic relationship. But it also can speak to the idea that um, even if this this uh, cooperation or, or partnership um, is symbiotic, okay, how does it really make you feel when you look at yourself in the mirror? Okay, that is the question. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull a Lenormand card on this Six of Pentacles here.
to see if it can give me uh, any more information. Um, the Empress is about abundance and prosperity. And most people, when they hear those two words, they only think of finances. But uh, to be prosperous means that all areas of your life uh, are bringing you uh, some form of wealth. Okay, some type of resource in which you can really, uh, you get something good out of it. And by getting something good, you are in turn able to give out something good. Now, for many of you, the moon card has come out. Um, in the Lenormand card, the moon card uh, can be um, about fame, uh, about attention. Um, it can be about romance. It can be about emotions. It can also rule here with this uh, Empress card can be female issues. Maybe some of you are going through the change. <laughs> um, maybe some of you um, might want to um, start a family, but you haven't been able to do so because you, you, you can't get your partner uh, to settle down long enough to do what he's supposed to do and or vice versa. Um, I, I do feel for some of you, there's a component of water around. I'm, I'm looking at a bay in both cards. Okay, they, they practically mirror each other here with the mountains on the side, the other mountains. Do you see that? Okay, so this could have something to do with the situation uh, around water, by water, near water. I do feel that the Empress card showing up, it is about summer. We are coming up on the fall equinox. So if this is a moment in which you are going through something, this may play all the way out until September 21st, 22nd, somewhere along in there, where the situation may change. Um, the moon in uh, the Lenormand card, maybe some of you have been uh, spending more time doing for other people and not gaining the recognition that you need. Okay, so this could be the idea of stepping out making that decision to step out away from this six of pentacles maybe you keep having people shore you up because you fear yourself that you can't do it on your own that's self-esteem and self-value all right so that's how this get acquainted reading works all right um i hope this has been instructive for you um if you have any questions you can hit me up on about how this works you can hit me up on the support desk uh, button on the main menu of the site. Um, I am still offering that 24-hour access for those of you who'd like to come in and uh, see the, what do you call it, the um, monthly readings. Um, there's also several articles that you get access to. And I have this the three different levels of membership, the seven day, the 30 days for $7. That is non-recurring the uh, $28 uh, membership level that's good for six months it does automatically uh, renew after six months but you have the ability to either uh, cancel that stop it pause it and then there is the one year $50 full access uh, and that means full those all of them even if it's a, it's a 30 day you get full access to the site so that is uh, astrology charts that are articles there are other videos that I post up. There are um, e-books. Um, you have an opportunity to post questions. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that I teach on the back end behind on that website that I don't put out here in videos. So, um, you know, again, you may feel that I am the reader for you or the worker for you. And then again, you may not. And again, as I say, that's okay. But if you'd like just uh, an acquaintance of how I work on a personal level without fear, okay, um, without prejudice, I don't judge people, no matter what it is they tell me, I don't judge people. Um, but if you're not willing to um, have it put to you straight, then again, I may not be the reader for you, <laughs> okay? I'm just not going to do that. Um, I'm a I'm a straight talking 
direct individual. I try to be as compassionate as I can, uh, but if there's no other way to say it, you'll hear me say that there ain't no other way to say it, but this is the deal. So um, do know that my, my role is never to harm, to intentionally harm or hurt you, to lie to you, to steal from you, to deceive you in any way, shape or form. My role is to give you the information and then help you to make the best choices moving forward for yourself and also how to do the work in order to bring about those things that you, you're trying to um, deal with. So that's what I have for you. I hope this message helps. And until next time, namaste. I do hope to see some of you. Okay, bye-bye.